So, the degradation because of the inclined plane experimentation happens at several locations, these are the various samples which you see the degradation which has happened. These are the surface morphological studies experiment analysis which have been carried out. And we know that samples which are investigated using the inclined plane method particularly for the high temperature vulcanized and liquid silicon rubber samples both for the acidic and normal contaminants are analyzed both under AC and DC voltage applications. So, under different environmental conditions were simulated using the acid rain effect which is available the details available in the literature as per the data available. So, it is observed that during the experimentation both for AC and DC we have assumed the AC RMS equivalent in case of DC voltage application. This is found to be more uh, severe particularly for uh, the high temperature vulcanized and liquid uh, silicon uh, rubber both uh, samples uh, and uh, further in case of liquid silicon rubber this is much more uh, severely affected uh, during the experimentation. So, the electrodes used for uh, the experimentation also were seen degraded under DC stress in comparison to the AC stress and the electrode material uh, traces were observed uh, to be left over on the surface. Uh, this was observed in the energy dispersive x-ray analysis, EDAX analysis which was uh, conducted. Further it was observed that the application of uh, acid rain uh, contaminant adversely affects the samples. Also the damages which are caused under acidic environment is uh, found to be much more severe uh, for the liquid silicon uh, rubber samples. This is confirmed also by the leakage uh, current which was measured continuously during the period of experimentation and also uh, due to the material degradation uh, which has shown uh, uh, by the surface analysis like the SEM and DDAX analysis. So, chemically the material degradation is confirmed, confirmed uh, by the uh, Fourier transform infrared analysis. So, very important uh, uh, experimentation and the analysis uh, for the estimation of the surface uh, degradation on the polymer uh, samples. So, after the inclined plane arrangement and the surface erosion studies, uh, the aging of uh, the polymer or a composite insulator is of utmost uh, importance. Uh, aging as mentioned uh, it consists of uh, three types of uh, experimentation uh, which is being carried out in the laboratory. One is uh, the salt fog method which is applied to the insulator continuously for a thousand hours and the electric stress is applied uh, surface uh, changes are absorbed. The second is the rotating uh, wheel arrangement uh, as uh, indicated here in this uh, schematic. Uh, this is as per IEC uh, 60112 standard uh, very clearly shows that these are the four uh, uh, insulator uh, uh, samples all these are uh, fixed to a mechanical arrangement four insulators are uh, fixed. This uh, is a tank uh, where the contaminant or uh, water of uh, conductivity is placed in the tank here. The insulator undergoes uh, the dip uh, period that is the insulator gets dipped in this uh, period. Then after the it rotates and comes to the horizontal position for a period which is known as the drip period that is a dip to the drip period where the droplets drip uh, during this period. Further the insulator comes in contact with the high voltage, this is the high voltage point for a period and after the high voltage it comes back to the cooling period. These are the four uh, stages uh, of uh, the rotating wheel uh, arrangement, uh, each uh, rotation is shown here. Uh, this rotating wheel as per a standard uh, 40 seconds is the dip period in the contaminant. 40 seconds later 8 seconds is the transition from the dip to the drip period. So, from here to here 8 second transition 40 plus 8 seconds it comes horizontally here and it will wait here for 40 seconds for dripping. So, after 40 seconds again further from the drip to the high voltage uh, uh, 
uh, contact it has a transition of 8 seconds and further it halts here for 40 seconds. So, the contact from the high voltage will be there for 40 seconds further 8 second transition and rest for cooling for 40 seconds. So, totally 40 into 4 160 plus 8 into 4 that is 24 to, to 20 uh, it was a 32. So, totally it is 192 seconds is one cycle uh, complete one cycle is 192 seconds. So, this is a very important uh, experiment and uh, the fabrication and simulation of this facility is a uh, very important uh, task and involves lot of uh, effort particularly to simulate this condition where a suitable uh, sensor mechanism, a suitable uh, relays and uh, timers have to be used and the fabrication has to be carried out uh, as the experiment uh, proceeds for more than a thousand hours. So, several thousands of uh, um, uh, cycles have to be uh, done continuously with a uh, break as mentioned in the standard are 8 days uh, during the period of uh, after the 8 days there is a break of 1 hour for the change of the contaminant in the tank. So, this as uh, per the standard is allowed. So, this experimentation is a very important experimentation for the aging uh, analysis uh, on the polymer uh, insulator. This shows the aging studies experiment rotating wheel and dip facility developed in the laboratory for performing the aging performance of this insulator. You can see the high voltage transformer control panel here which is used to control the output of the voltage. Here is a regulator of the high voltage transformer. So, from the bushing of a high voltage transformer it is taken inside a small chamber of 8 feet by 8 feet uh, where uh, the facility is being uh, fabricated and um, arranged. Uh, you see the rotating wheel arrangement uh, you can see uh, presently 3 insulators are connected at 90 degrees and the fourth is not used intentionally. So, we have uh, fabricated in such a way uh, 2 arrangements simultaneously that is 3 and 3 insulators could be experimented and two different uh, solutions intentionally two different conductivities as the experiment is for a long duration of uh, time to lessen the time the two different uh, tanks have been used and the studies could be conducted for uh, two different contamination. This was the idea the fabrication has been carried out and important is during the high voltage contact this is a uh, dipping period where the insulator goes dips and this is a dripping period next comes to the high voltage contact and further cooling or the resting period. Uh, during this contact of the high voltage the important is to measure the leakage current again uh, uh, fabrication of the leakage current monitoring uh, device a small current shunt along with the necessary protection has been done uh, to see that during the contact the leakage current is uh, measured and that is communicated to the oscilloscope or uh, to the national instrument uh, module where continuous monitoring of discharge activity can be done. So, this is uh, shows the small uh, current shunt uh, along with the protection which is used for leakage current uh, monitoring. This is spe specially fabricated spring type of mechanism where when the insulator co comes in contact with the metal structure this spring action uh, will be seen that it comes in contact with the insulator metal part and the flow of leakage current is carried out through the a cable and uh, seen across the oscilloscope. So, this arrangement of, of 40 seconds dipping, 8 second transition and 40 second uh, dripping uh, transition res, uh, contacting with the high voltage then uh, resting everything is done using the proximity sensors which are been placed on the white uh, 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 diaphragm which is shown here. Uh, so, whenever the metal comes in a contact the, uh, the uh, proximity sensor uh, will uh, function and it sees that the time uh, and the uh, arrangement uh, which is required is maintained. Further we have a relay and a, a timer which is set along with the proximity sensor which will be helpful for uh, the continuous experimentation. So, this is the fabrication of the facility 
for conducting the aging studies. So, experimental studies have been conducted for over a period of time on several types of insulators. You can see the activity uh, initially the samples uh, will be of uh, dry conditions after some period uh, the samples slowly because of the scintillations or the discharges. You can see the discharges or a scintillations sometimes these scintillations happen near the second shed sometimes near the third sometimes in between shed to shed uh, discharges are also seen. So, this activity is completely random in nature and depends on the salt uh, depends on the conductivity of the solution and depends upon the dry band wet band formation during the dripping period uh, when the it comes with after the dripping period when it comes with the high voltage uh, uh, contact. So, this phenomena which uh, undergoes for a thousand hours uh, experimentation uh, after the experimentation we have seen the samples completely eroded or uh, completely uh, degraded. So, these are the samples uh, for uh, the AC uh, conditions for uh, uh, normal uh, contaminant and with the acidic uh, composition uh, with two different tanks. So, we have seen the surface completely eroded and degraded. So, this will help uh, to see that the samples performance losing the hydrophobicity a similar situation if it exceeds in the field. This gives an idea uh, to see how the sample performs over long period of time with the uh, rotating wheel uh, type of uh, arrangement. So, further to that not only the surface degradation some of the places a uh, puncture uh, signs have been noticed and the pin uh, or a metal corrosion has happened uh, on many of the samples and in particular in acidic uh, treated uh, samples a uh, more degradation more surface rupture and uh, the pin getting corroded have been uh, visible uh, much more in compared to the normal contaminant. So, several of the experimentations have been uh, conducted and uh, evaluated for uh, various uh, types of uh, uh, samples. And again uh, we have uh, performed the surface analysis morphological analysis using SEM, EDAX, FTIR uh, and other uh, techniques to uh, verify the surface uh, changes on the fresh and the uh, treated uh, samples. So, this uh, shows some of the uh, SEM studies conducted for uh, the fresh then uh, it is for the normal uh, contaminants as per the standard then acidic contaminant as per the acid rain simulation. Uh, some of the information again from EDAX showed various uh, compositions of the metals which have come in existence and uh, some has also been conducted for the um, surface uh, degradation and the powdery element which uh, is present and it is also been uh, seen how the uh, performance of this uh, for the degradation. This is an FTIR Fourier transform infrared uh, analysis. Uh, conducted on uh, uh, different uh, pH uh, values of 3 and 6.9 along with the fresh. The red uh, spectrum indicates the fresh sample, uh, the blue indicates the pH value of 3.3 and the green indicates the pH value of 6.9. So, this uh, gives a very clear indication the peak variation particularly at wave number 1260 somewhere here you can see the uh, peak uh, variation at 1260 corresponds to SI uh, CH3 bonds uh, which were applied. This implies that the side chain uh, of the PDMS that is a polydimethyl siloxin uh, presence of the compound here. This implies that formation of that. The second uh, polar uh, CH3 groups are responsible for uh, the hydrophobicity. This is damaged by the oxidation and cross linking which results in temporary loss of uh, hydrophobicity. The changes in the main chain of PDMS uh, that is a polydimethyl uh, siloxin compound, uh, the SI bonds uh, correspond to the wave number of 1800. You can see here uh, this which is encircled here uh, were also observed uh, and this main chain breakage leads to the material degradation. So, this shows the material degradation and you can see the magnitudes uh, variation uh, with the pH uh, values, the red indicates for the fresh the green uh, for uh, the treated with pH 6.6 .6 and the blue with uh, pH 3 as the pH value uh, comes down that is a higher uh, acidity the uh, performance of uh, the 
uh, chain breakage uh, leads to the material much more degradation. This gives the FTIR analysis uh, which is performed on uh, the sample. A similar trend was seen for several of the samples which have been uh, experimented. So, experimentation was uh, performed in case for both the normal and acidic uh, environments using the rotating wheel arrangement. Uh, specially designed and uh, fabricated uh, uh, wheel and uh, dip uh, facility for uh, both AC and DC uh, studies is developed. The leakage uh, current measurements are uh, monitored using a specially made uh, shunt resistance box with proper uh, uh, protection at the ground end and the variation of the leakage uh, current was observed to be uh, significant. Uh, visual inspection has revealed after the experiment uh, material degradation was observed uh, higher in case of uh, the acidic uh, treatment uh, samples uh, in comparison to the uh, normal uh, uh, samples. This was further uh, confirmed by the Fourier transform infrared analysis uh, which was shown that for different peaks uh, corresponding uh, wavelengths the main chain SiO, Si and side chain SiC of polymer based material pertaining to the PDMS. Then the scanning electron microscope and energy dispersive x-ray analysis conducted was found, uh, shown that the presence of different elements on the surface of insulator uh, which were under investigations. The thermogravity gravimetric analysis uh, results also show the increase in percentage uh, weight loss for acidic samples in comparison to the normal uh, uh, contaminant uh, samples. It was also seen under uh, acidic uh, contaminant uh, environment, uh, accelerated corrosion, uh, the faster corrosion was observed over the surface of end metal fittings. This confirms the presence of uh, metal oxides. So, these are some of the observations, uh, uh, important uh, uh, observations uh, during the uh, rotating wheel experimentation, which gives an idea of uh, the uh, changes, uh, morphological changes and chemical uh, changes which is happening on the uh, insulator and uh, metal uh, parts. <coughs> so, we will uh, see how the experiment is fabricated in the laboratory and the experimentation is done. You can see now the surface is contacted with the high voltage, you see the same discharges or scintillations which are happening here. So, this uh, will be here for 40 seconds, after the 40 seconds the insulator moves to the cooling period, then again dips in the solution and it comes back to the drip period. So, this experiment uh, is a very important experiment, you can see the discharges happening either side of the uh, on the shaft which the insulators are fixed, we have two different tanks. So, one is a normal contaminant, other is a acidic uh, contaminant. Uh, the activity of the insulator or the surface activity uh, because of electric stress after the uh, thing is very clearly seen. So, this uh, cycle of uh, rotation and uh, the voltage stress which is being seen will be uh, continuously applied for a th uh, thousand hours and the experimentation uh, is being uh, uh, conducted and during the experimentation the flow of leakage current on both the sides is uh, measured using uh, the shunt uh, box with the protection uh, employing a digital storage oscilloscope and also national uh, instrument uh, module uh, where you can capture the data for the entire uh, 40 seconds uh, period and during the contact of uh, high voltage. So, you can see the discharges uh, and after 40 seconds the insulator next in the line uh, comes in contact with the high voltage. This transition is 8 seconds, you can see how the uh, experiment is being carried out. So, initially due to wetness you can see the several uh, discharges uh, for because of the wet uh, of the surface. So, later on because of the stress there will be drying up and suddenly you, you see the discharges uh, or the conductivity coming down, the leakage current flowing on the surface also comes down. So, this is how uh, the experimentation a very important uh, 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 experimentation for the evaluation of uh, the polymer uh, insulators.
So, after the rotating wheel uh, aging experimentation, uh, further multiple stress experimentation, multiple stress is an important uh, experimentation which is typically carried out for a very long period of time. Uh, say, uh, uh, as per initially standards may mention the experimentation has to be carried out for 5000 hours. So, this is a rigorous experimentation or analysis which is done for the insulator, uh, polymer insulator. You should have a specially uh, built chamber uh, where the simulation of uh, uh, several parameters have to be uh, carried out, uh, the humidity, uh, the temperature, the rain simulation the salt fog for the pollution, the solar radiation that is a UV radiation and the voltage. So, these are 6 parameters to be applied to the insulator simultaneously at an interval to see the performance over a period of time. So, how this experimentation is performed in the laboratory? Again it involves lot of effort to fabricate such a facility and conduct the experimentation, monitor the experimentation then monitor the surface of the insulator continuously, uh, then evaluate the surface. So, it is a uh, rigorous uh, task for the engineers uh, for conducting the experimentation. The cycle shows as follows here, uh, this uh, cycle which is here or this uh, describes for a 24 hour uh, period uh, of electric stress. So, depending upon the number of hours say 1000 or 5000 hours, this is continuously repeated with a break off uh, as mentioned in the standard. So, the voltage stress is continuously applied for uh, 24 hours in a day, then when it comes to solar radiation. So, solar radiation is simulated for totally each uh, block here is 2 hours. So, 4 into 3 blocks that is 12 hours is the simulation of solar radiation with a gap interval uh, of uh, as shown here. The dark blocks show the stress which is applied, the white blocks show the stress is not applied. So, the entire dark block which is shown here is the electric stress which is applied on the insulator 24 hours. The solar radiation is applied 4 hours gap of 6, again 4 gap of 6. Then comes the salt fog, the salt fog is applied totally for 8 hours. You can see when that salt fog is applied for 4 hours there is a gap, again there is a uh, 4 hour uh, application of salt fog. Similarly, the rain, rain composition is applied only for 2 hours in a day uh, as shown here. Further temperature, the temperature is a totally for 10 hours, so 10 hours is a 4 hours continuous gap of 12 hours, again 4 hours gap of 12 hours and 2 hours. So, this is the application of a temperature and humidity. Humidity is totally for 4 hours, it is applied a 2 hours with a gap of 8 and again 2 hours. This is how the cycle has been uh, um, explained in the standard as per uh, 6011 which is to be followed for evaluating the multi stress or multiple uh, stress arrangement uh, for the insulators uh, continuously. Apart from this the temperature uh, we are supposed to use a xenon lamp or a UV lamp uh, for the simulation of UV radiation that is the solar uh, radiation is to be applied using the xenon arc lamp. So, this cycle is a very difficult uh, task uh, to be simulated in the laboratory. Worldwide uh, there are only few laboratories where uh, this uh, facility is available and uh, experimentation uh, is being uh, uh, done. <clears throat> so, in the laboratory here we have uh, tried to uh, simulate uh, the experimental uh, uh, arrangement uh, for a multi stress environment considering 4 important uh, parameters uh, and the experimental uh, setup is as uh, uh, follows. You can see the control uh, arrangement here, you can see the oscilloscope the control arrangement for the transformer. This is the regulator com, uh, control arrangement, a transformer, a uh, resistor for a protection in case of the flashover and this is the multi stress uh, chamber which has been fabricated for the experimentation. The multi stress chamber consists 
of the parameters which can be accommodated is the temperature, the humidity, the UV and the continuous electric stress. So, the electric uh, supply the high voltage supply is taken through the silicon cable and a bushing here. So, inside a 2.5 by 2.5 feet is the chamber you can see the insulators 4 insulators of 11 kV are being energized uh, at a voltage uh, known voltage of uh, 10 kilo volts uh, as per the standard uh, depending upon the creepage length of the insulators used. So, we have a power supply a three phase uh, power supply uh, then a regulator the control panel transformer protection bushing multi stress arrangement uh, UV protected window to see the sample energized and the measurement uh, box and uh, uh, data acquisition system uh, with the lab view uh, platform for uh, data analyzing uh, facility. Again here uh, we have uh, tried to modify the cycle which was uh, as per the standards so has four parameters have been uh, considered in the present study. The experimental arrangement uh, is shown here we have put up four insulators in uh, um, the chamber. Uh, this shows the thermal uh, imaging uh, at equally distributed temperature on the samples uh, with the thermal image uh, imager uh, of uh, testo make. The cycle which has been adopted for the present experiment is as uh, follows which has shown for 24 hours. So, here uh, we have applied the electrical stress for 24 hours the entire uh, combination you can uh, see here. Uh, the ultraviolet radiation we have used for specially made uh, UL, uh, UV lamps ultraviolet, uh, voltage, uh, ultraviolet uh, lamps which uh, has an output of 1 watt per uh, meter uh, uh, square. This ultraviolet is applied uh, for a period of uh, uh, 6 hours uh, continuously with a gap of 6 and further 6 hours. Then heating the temperature we have applied 50 degrees for a period of uh, uh, 4 hours with a gap again 4 hours. Similarly, humidity, humidity we have uh, 85 plus minus 90 uh, degrees uh, humidity has been uh, made for 4 hours as shown here. This uh, cycle is not exactly pertaining to the uh, standards uh, we have a deviation uh, in the standard and this is uh, what we have followed for the experimental or research pertaining to this polymer insulators. So, this uh, <coughs> chamber uh, shows the multi stress arrangement which has been uh, uh, fabricated in the uh, laboratory. So, where uh, four parameters have been uh, used humidity, uh, heating, uh, UV radiation and high voltage and the experiments have been uh, performed over a period of uh, 1000 hours. So, at regular intervals the measurement of uh, leakage current you can sh see the uh, leakage current measurements have been uh, uh, the connections have been taken through a Teflon uh, uh, wires and connected to a shunt box um, the, and the measurements have been uh, carried out. You can see the shunt box. Uh, which is uh, fixed here. The measurements uh, from the chamber uh, through the silicon uh, Teflon cable uh, comes here and from uh, the send box it is being connected to the uh, um, measuring uh, oscilloscope or to the uh, national instrument uh, uh, data analyzing uh, systems. So, this is how the measurement of leakage current at regular intervals is been uh, carried out. So, experiments have been performed. This is uh, a typical uh, leakage uh, current waveform uh, which uh, shows here uh, has been uh, for a, a particular one sample. Uh, this shows the, uh, 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 the frequency component involved in that uh, at that junction uh, so which is found through the uh, which is got from the oscilloscope. Uh, the over a period of time uh, this typically gives uh, um, uh, the experimental duration for uh, 500 hours. So, further experimentation was still carried out for 1000 hours. Uh, uh, it shows that uh, the current uh, which is uh, here it will be in terms of uh, micro amps uh, versus the experimental duration that is a period in uh, hours. Uh, you can see that uh, initially the current uh, for all the samples the all the four samples uh, keeps low and over a period of uh, oh, more than around 150 or uh, above 150 or 100 hours you can see the slowly the increase in uh, the current uh, is observed 
and further after 500 hours it was also seen uh, we have tried to conduct the experiment for 1000 hours a further increase has been observed. So, this shows that uh, for the multi stress uh, the leakage current uh, tries to uh, increase uh, over a period of time and also the surface uh, degradation uh, studies analysis uh, were uh, conducted after 500 and after 1000 hours. It was seen that uh, the performance of the rubber particularly silicon rubber uh, the behavior uh, for uh, the surface changes and hydrophobicity changes uh, are also monitored uh, at regular intervals. Uh, so, for this as mentioned a unique uh, uh, climatic uh, aging experimental uh, uh, facility is fabricated particularly to evaluate the long term uh, reliability of uh, silicon uh, rubber insulators under uh, different environmental stresses uh, as mentioned uh, ultraviolet humidity temperature and electric stress in the present experimentation. Uh, the experiment uh, it was seen that as the experiment uh, proceeds the surface of uh, the insulators uh, degrade and there were uh, uh, instances where a small dry band and wet band formations uh, where discharges uh, were observed uh, particularly in the presence of moisture. Uh, this was uh, reflected uh, during the measurement of uh, a leakage current uh, pulses uh, uh, where uh, during the monitoring of uh, leakage current uh, measurements. Further FTIR that is a Fourier transform infrared uh, spectroscopy um, studies illustrate the surface hydroxylation uh, particularly for the phenomenon on the aged insulators of 500 or 1000 hours. Uh, this may be due to the humidification which has been applied on the sample. It was also observed the salt deposition uh, was on all the aged samples uh, due to multi stress weathering uh, like CaCl magnesium, zinc, uh, NaRR these were all detected uh, in the salt layer using the energy dispersive x-ray analysis uh, over the period of time this uh, were prominent after the 1000 hours. Uh, and when the thermogravimetric analysis was done uh, it was observed there was a shift in the curve particularly for the aged samples uh, in comparison to the fresh uh, this is correlated. Uh, to the extra added mass due to the salt deposition which we have uh, observed on the samples. Uh, further mechanical uh, strength was uh, measured for the samples uh, for uh, flat and uh, samples which were also placed uh, inside the chamber during the experimentation and the tensile strength was measured. The tensile strength indicated uh, the 46, 30.3, 11.120 reduction in the breakpoint extension. So, it was shown that decrease in this percentage was observed uh, for the aged uh, samples like uh, HTV1, uh, HTV2 or the high temperature vulcanized samples two different samples uh, liquid silicon rubber 1 and liquid silicon 2 all four different samples experimentation was carried out and it was found that uh, the uh, decrease in tensile strength was observed. The reason again uh, could be uh, due to the aging of samples which show uh, over a period of time the brittle nature. Uh, this uh, could be because of the effect of the ultraviolet uh, radiations on the sample. So, uh, multi stress uh, experimentation uh, gives an idea for the long uh, duration performance of uh, the polymer insulators uh, because of effect of UV, effect of uh, humidity, because of effect of uh, temperature, uh, because of effect of uh, electric stress, uh, rain, and uh, many factors. So, this experimentation as insulators are organic in nature is very important to be conducted no doubt the arrangement of this facility is not an easy task uh, requires lot of uh, effort uh, to be made and lot of uh, uh, experience uh, is required to conduct this. So, very few laboratories across the world have the facility to conduct uh, the full fledged uh, multi stress uh, experimentation uh, to find out uh, the performance of these samples which is an indicator uh, or uh, estimating the long uh, performance of uh, insulators in the field. Uh, so, coming to the uh, point uh, after the reliability uh, of and testing of this uh, samples for various uh, experimentation uh, the standards uh, which are being used uh, or standards which are uh, being uh, uh, recognized for the evaluation 
do provide a comprehensive coverage of many aspects uh, that would affect uh, the performance of insulators in service. So, this uh, standard uh, uh, the may be for uh, the ceramic glass or the polymer insulators in service. Uh, routinely insulators are normally uh, tested for reliability for electrical and mechanical uh, aspects uh, this as with reference to the standards and uh, normally are carried out at slightly higher than the normal uh, operating uh, voltages. To mention, but none of the tests whatever the tests which are being prescribed in the standard or specified in the standard give an indication of the expected life of the insulator. So, the reliability experimentation or the standard testings which are carried out uh, in the laboratories or in the industry uh, do not uh, give the exact uh, life uh, expectation of uh, any insulator in service. So, since no single technology uh, could provide the exact solution uh, to the high voltage uh, line insulation, uh, the utilities uh, or the power uh, suppliers uh, should carefully evaluate uh, the actual performance uh, experience of uh, the about technologies. Uh, it may be a ceramic or a porcelain or a glass or a polymer or a newer type of uh, technologies which are being adopted have to look into the performance experience of each uh, technology, uh, weigh them on their merits and then try to adopt uh, for the actual required uh, performance. So, this is the important uh, note to be uh, taken into consideration.